Hi, this is Troy from Cube Dweller Fitness, and I've got Mike Whitfield. He's the author of Workout Finishers, and uh, I just wanted to get together with him and share a little bit with how it would help Cube Dwellers as we look at our fitness. So, Mike, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Glad to have you. Why don't you tell me, what, what is Workout Finishers? How did you get into fitness and, and uh, turbulence training? And just give us some background, right? Who is Mike? Okay. Um, well, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. Actually, Ackworth, Georgia. It's about 30 minutes north of Ackworth, uh, of Atlanta. And basically, I got into fitness because I was actually a big guy myself. Um, I was actually almost 300 pounds oh, wow. um, back in 2002. Yeah, at the end of 2002. And it's kind of funny how I got into it. What happened is I was playing PlayStation, and I threw an interception. I got upset, threw down the remote, I went down to go get it, and that's when I, I finally realized, wow, because I saw this big gut, mm. and I realized, okay, I've got to do something about this. And uh, <laughs> So I, I jumped on the New Year's bandwagon uh, in 2003, never looked back. Um, I lost 75 pounds wow. in six months. Yep. That's awesome. And uh, since then, I've dropped another 35 and have been able to keep it off. So I've lost 105 pounds altogether. So that's that's what propelled me into the to the fitness industry. You lost and, a person, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's uh, it's crazy. Still looking at my old pictures, I still can't wrap my head around it. So it's just uh, I've, I've literally transformed my mind and body. So that's what got me into it, and uh, been in it since uh, 2005, I believe, or 2006. Okay. And uh, came across Craig Ballantyne, I believe, uh, in Men's Health. Okay. And uh, followed his principles for the longest time. And uh, I got better results, especially uh, breaking plateaus and, of course, um, working with my clients. My clients were getting better results, so I knew uh, those style of workouts were the way to go. And uh, next thing you know, Craig comes out with this uh, certification in the spring of this year, and I was I hopped on board because I knew that's where I wanted to, to be right and what I wanted it. to do. So. Uh, and I was already using those style of workouts with my clients anyway, so why not be officially uh, certified? So that's what got me on board with turbulence training. Nice. Um, the finishers, though, it's, it's a funny story. Uh, it happened, I started using them about three years ago. And what had happened is, is one of two things. Uh, my client was either they were either getting a little burned out or uh, they didn't, or they couldn't get to the treadmills or ellipticals for the inter interval work. And, of yeah. course, that's you know, Dying too early, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, intervals obviously are, are a much better approach to fat loss than uh, steady state cardio. So I knew it, we had to do some kind of interval training. Yep. Like I said, a lot of times the, the equipment was, was taken up. So I had to think of something to, uh, to substitute for that. So uh, I started having my clients do, you know what, I would, I would tell them, you know what, instead of hip hopping on the elliptical or bike, I want you to do prisoner squats uh, push-ups and inverted rows with very little rest, you know, in between circuits. And of course, I would give them a certain amount of reps and that kind of thing. And yep. I noticed a couple of things. One, they were sticking to their interval training programs more often because they weren't getting burned out. Yep. And two, uh, they were able to do it no matter what because they didn't have to use any equipment. And I, I started noticing nice. their figures were changing. And I thought, <laughs> uh -huh, I'm onto something here. Yeah. And, uh, and it's kind of been a snowball effect ever since then. It was an idea put on the shelf um, about two years ago. I, I thought it would be a cool idea, and then I just kind of it, it collected dust for a while. <laughs> and, of course, this year I, I brought it back out. I said, you know, I'm going to finish this thing, put it out on the market. People want it. People love it. And uh, it's, it's been a great ride ever since. That's awesome. Uh, and I think that's so true. One, two of the things that I heard in there is, one, trying to find a way to make – it not steady state cardio, so it is something that's interval, but also make it fun, so you are going to stay engaged in it. And two, you're getting results from it. You know, I I know in my own workouts, whenever I compress the intervals together, I have a lot more fun doing it than just sitting there trodden away. Um, and sure. and then to mix up doing different exercises, you're seeing the results because you're doing some resistance training too. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think is the easiest way to get started in that type of interval training? Um, I would start off with something simple. Um, as a matter of fact, the, the first one in the manual is what's called the upper lower countdown. And okay. it's, uh, the one thing you have to know, though, is interval training compared to finishers, you have to, you have to mentally prepare for them because they are tougher than the standard intervals. They all, although they last typically shorter than intervals, 
uh, they are they are more demanding of the body because you use more muscle groups. Uh, most of my finishers are actually total body, but uh, the upper lower countdown is you basically do ten lunge jumps, and then immediately go into ten push ups, and then you go back and you do nine lunge jumps with each leg, and then oh, you do wow. nine push ups, and you basically yep. work in that fashion until you complete one rep one rep of each exercise. And the idea behind it is that you rest only when needed. And if you really want to challenge yourself, what you could do is is write down how much time it took you to complete that finisher, yep. and then next time you do that, see if you can beat your time by a little bit. Of course, keep form the time. Yep, keep pushing. Exactly. I like that. One of the things I know I've enjoyed about ladders, both just the down ladders or any any combination, is uh, I think it's a mental game. Uh, it feels like I'm only doing ten reps, right? right. Nine reps. <laughs> But before you're done, you've done a tremendous amount of reps. And, and so it's, I think it's a great way to, I don't want to say trick your mind, but that's really what we're doing. Uh, sure. Tricking your mind into, into doing a lot more work uh, than we would without it. So that's, I like that combination. We'll put that in the blog post below and just kind of describe that as, as people go so you can see it. Um, awesome. Any, any other closing remarks on this one? It was a great summary to see where you're at, Mike, and kind of how you got into this. Um, what else would you leave people with? Uh, give it a shot. Give finishers a shot. Um, really challenge yourself and and uh, just step out. Of, you know, you're obviously going to, have to step out of your comfort zone a little bit, but it's uh, it's well worth it because the afterburn that you get from it is tremendous. That's nice. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. You're and very welcome. Check, check out his program below. We'll have some links, and like I said, I'll document his his example workout finisher for you guys to give it a try. Get that body burning, and then go check out his program. Thanks. All right.